to show you the fifth and final section of the entertainer. Now hopefully if you've been watching the other videos and learning the other sections, you've already got the music, but if you've lost it or something, you can get it at truepianolessons.com, uh, clicking on the music library. And if you um, have the music, you'll notice that the fifth section does not line up, the, the phrases do not line up with the lines. So you'll still divide it up two measures and two measures and four, but it'll look a little bit different. So I'll show you that here in a second. Um, we'll practice it the same old way, memorizing as you go. And once you get the fifth section, hopefully that means you've got the entire piece learned. Now these videos have been designed just to, to teach you the notes, the rhythms, the articulation, which includes the pedaling and the fingering. Those are the basic things that you need to learn to be able to play the piece. But then, once you've got the whole thing learned, it's up to you to start working on tempo and developing the style that you want to play it in, the, the interpretation, louds and soft dynamics and all that stuff. Um, I'm not including that in these videos because that's the kind of stuff that you get from listening to various performances of it. So, anyway, here we go with section five. So, this is how you divide this music. It's the same way, but I just wanted to show it to you since it's sort of laid out a little differently. The measures, um, first four measures, one, two, three, four, right there. I like to put my big parentheses like that and then chop it in the middle. The next one starts right here, one, two, three, four. Chop it in the middle, but a little bit of a curve on that. <laughs> okay, and then I like to be able to tell the difference between my lines that are chopping it in half and my parentheses. The parentheses one, two, three, four. I don't even have to count because obviously I have them labeled. But this is just so you know how to do this. I, I do this with the music so visually it sort of just guides me. So anyway, there's how you would divide the music up. All right, let's get on with working on it. Okay, with your right hand, on the first two measures of S, the S phrase. Number two is on D, four fingers on F, and you just go back and forth between this third and the third with a thumb on C sharp and third finger on E. So you go back and forth, it's one, and then and two, and then one and three again. And then you jump up, your second finger's on the A, you go to a sixth on F, the pedal will already be down on one, and you come in with A, then off the pedal, pedal, up. You jump down to a two four on E and G, and the pedal goes back in. I'll do that again, counting and pedaling. One, E, and a two. it and then the left hand is on an F chord. If you look at an F chord, this is an F major. And the left hand plays the root of the chord and then jumps up to the bottom two notes. I use either a 1-2 or a 1-3. You can choose. I, on the music I put 1-2. And then the, the middle note of the F chord, so you jump down to A and do it again. Back up to the same bottom two notes. The bottom note of the F chord. The third bottom note is called the root. <laughs> the root of the chord, the third of the chord, back to the root. So you do that twice, and then you finish with a C, and that switches us to a C major chord. Okay? So that those are the notes. Now I'll count it and use the pedal. One, E, and a, two, E, and a, one, E, and a, two, Not too tough with the left hand, but get it learned and memorized, and then put them together. Really so. One E and two E and one E and two E and you'll notice at the end of that first measure, I, I held on to the right hand note too long. I like it; they both to come off together like this. One. Do those 
those two measures until you have it memorized, and then move on to the next two measures. Right hand, finish with these two notes with a two and four, and again you go back and forth between this third and another third, this time both of them sharp. So one and three on D sharp and F sharp. And then just go back and forth, and then you jump up, and then third finger this time on the C, two notes of the T phrase. Now I'll do it counting. It's one E and pedal, pedal down and you jump one E and a two E and a one pedal. So you get the feel for the pedal going down on the beat, up on the and. Now once you get the right hand memorized, left hand's turn. Left hand starts with a C chord and it goes all the way through those two measures with just a C major chord inverted. Okay, I, I like to jump to a 5-3-1 on that. And, and the bottom note is going back and forth between the root and the fifth. So it goes like this. And then the pedal goes down on the bottom note, then up. And you finish with G, and that's the first note of the T phrase. Okay, so that's the right hand, I mean, sorry, the left hand. No big deal, get that one memorized. And then put them together with the pedal and the counting. One E, a two E, a one E, two E, and a one. Oh, I just made a mistake. Look. See, I make mistakes all the time. So anyway, you put those two measures together with both hands until you have them memorized. And then it's time to do the whole phrase like this. We're going to put a stop in there on the first time. So we're stopping after two measures. One, E, two, O, E, two, E, two, E. Stop. Now go from there. together without the stop and with a metronome at 72 on the 16th first. speed so instead of the, having the um, metronome beating on the 16th it's beating on the 8th note so you can kind of hear what it's going to sound like and that was the S phrase get that memorized play it several times perfectly by memory and then you're ready to move on to the T phrase. So the T phrase has the right hand starting with the second finger, fourth finger on this third. This is part of a G major chord. The left hand is playing G also, but it's playing a G7 chord. So just be thinking G chord here. 4-2, and it's again parallel third. You just go back and forth, this time with an A sharp and a C sharp with a three and a one. So it's, you go back and forth, pedal, and then Jump to your third finger here, your fifth finger. This time it's a seventh from here, B to the A. And this goes to an octave C. You can hear how out of tune my piano is. There, all right, so now let's do that again with the counting and the pedal. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one. And I like to overlap a little bit. I have one. If you want to, you can play that next rhythm. So those are the first two measures with the right hand. Get it memorized, and then it's the left hand's turn. 
Like I said, the left hand is playing a G chord with a seventh at it, okay? But the seventh is down here. So this is the chord you're going to be playing in between the root and the third, and then the root and the fifth. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here's the root of the chord, the third and the fifth. Well, on the bottom you're going to go um, the root. I was pointing to the music. You can't see the music. The root, and then the third. Back to the root, and then the fifth. And in between, you stick the chord. So it's going to be like this. Down. The third. And then the root again. And the fifth. And then you just kind of stay in this area, but you move the, the fifth and the third finger up to D sharp, F sharp. And a nice little diminished seven chord. Okay? Which is actually a, 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 a D sharp diminished seven chord. So now we're going to play that again with counting. One, E. on that till it's memorized and then put both hands together. One. two measures of the T phrase. Right hand has that octave C, and you'll notice the pedaling. I just write a pedal straight through that whole measure. One, E, and a two, then to a sixth, and one, and then jump down to a three and a five. This sets you up for the next position. That's why I put that fingering in there. So it's and a two, and, and then you're right where you need to be to start the U phrase. Of course, the U phrase, you kind of already know. It's the same. Same as the uh, S phrase. So I'm going to go back and do that again. The last two measures of the T phrase. One, E, and a two, E, and a one. And a two, and one. And I just, I just play those staccato. Okay. Now the left hand, once you get the right hand memorized, the left hand has a D sharp and an F sharp and a C. That's that diminished seventh chord. One, E, and Two notes move up. One and a two and one. And that's it. So the left hand is pretty easy. Work on that till you get it. And then we'll put the hands together. One E and two and a two and one. Alright, now we're gonna go back and do the whole T phrase. Assuming you just did, you know, a few perfect ones with both hands on the last two measures. Now put those four measures together with a stop in the middle. So, two, four here. We're back at the beginning of the T phrase. Left hand's on G. One. stop and with the metronome at 72 for the 16th slow, doesn't it? It's that good. You should be playing it very slow. And then over time, you'll be able to gradually work your way up the dial until you get to twice that fast, which is this speed. This is the 72 for the eighth note. One. You could put the uh, two phrases together, S and T. I won't do that for now, but once you've done that a few times, 
go on to the U phrase. All right, so the U phrase is exactly the same as the S phrase, note for note. So I don't have to really practice it again and relearn it. It's the same. You already know it. But the difference is you have to go to a different note with the, the first note of the next phrase, the V phrase. So you need to practice the end of the U phrase. I'll just play the last two measures once. You, learn the, you already know the right hand. It does this again. But here's where it's different. You have to know how to go to the A with your thumb. That's it. So practice that, that two measure stretch of the right hand until you have it going to the thumb on A. And then the left hand, the same old C chord as it did before. But then at the end of it, you have to practice going to an octave F. Okay, so practice that until you're good at that as well. You, just because it goes to a different spot, you need to treat it as if it's different, because it is. So now we'll put the hands together on just that. That's different. Now I'm gonna, and you could go through the whole process of doing the four measures with a stop and then the four measures with no stop, which is what I'm gonna skip to now to, to save a little time on this video. I'm gonna go to where the 72 is the eighth note, which is a, a tempo that'll take you a while to get there. practice that a few times of course you can put the entire um, three phrases together that you know the S the T and the U finishing on the first note of the V phrase but for now let's go ahead and start working on the V phrase All right so now the V phrase the first two measures of the V phrase with the right hand by itself second finger crosses over to A and then you have a seventh and then a sixth and then a third. You'll notice the thumb just stayed on A that whole time. Okay, I'll do that again. And then your fourth finger is right where it needs to be, and your thumb moves down. And then the third finger on D sharp, you put your thumb under to E, and your third finger ends up up here on A. Next, you just roll a C chord. This will help you memorize if you know that that's a C chord. And jump down and put your thumb on F sharp with a C on top. This is part of a D7 chord. Look, here's a D major chord with a seventh added. Scott Joplin just has played the thumb and third finger there. I mean, well, I don't know if Scott Joplin used that fingering, but he had those notes, F sharp and C. And that's where we'll stop for now. So now I'll do that counting with the pedaling. You'll notice on this part I put some, sort of a smooth pedaling in for the first measure. One, E, and, uh, two, E. And a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, jump one. That was the right hand part. Now learn that, get it memorized, and then play the left hand. Left hand is going to bounce around some octaves here, and this is why I put this pedaling in. I like this left hand line to be smooth. One E, you skip an O, and then just walk up to G. really easy because you go from this C chord, you keep the second finger on C and then the outside notes just move in to the black notes surrounding it and then back up. So it's this, just put your hand in a little bit and then back to this. And then you finish with an octave A, that's the first note of the next two measures, okay? So let's do that again, I'll count it. One, E, and a, two, E, and on that left hand until you get it, and then put the hands together. Right hand thumb, left hand, an octave on F, and here we go.
two measures till you have both hands memorized. And then we move on to the next two measures. Right hand by itself, you start with a thumb, this is that D7 chord. Thumb on F sharp, third finger on C. One, E, and, and then you have a neat chord here. Um, this is sort of a suspended G7 chord that resolves. Okay, this is, believe it or not, part of a G7 chord. If you look at it, here's a G major chord with a seventh added. Scott Joplin just put the, the seventh down here. And the left hand at that point will be playing kind of the root of the crumbing off the root of the chord. So anyway, here we go. I'll, I'll do the D7 again. One, you play that twice. And then the suspended chord. Off, and then jump down to a C major chord, which is, of course, the one chord. Now, this part we have to practice going to the first inning and then again to the second inning. So right now I'm going to the first inning. This chord is tied. And then you jump and you put your three and your five right there, and that sets us up for the S phrase again. Okay, so let me go back and do that again, counting. One E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a, one. Okay, so that's the um, second two measures of the V phrase going to the first inning. Now the left hand, octave, and it's outlining the D chord. Remember how I told you that was a D7 chord? Well, the left hand outlines the D chord like this with the octaves. And then you switch to a G chord. See that? The bottom two notes of a G chord. So if you're thinking about chords, it makes it easier to memorize. You can see it on the keys. The D chord here, and then the G chord here, and you finish with a C. Then off. And then you go back to S and you play the first note, which is right here in the pedal. So let me do that one more time counting. One E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a, one. All right. So now learn the, work on that left hand so you have it learned and memorized. And then both hands, like this. E. Two measures till you have them memorized, and then you got to learn it again going to the second ending. So let's do the right hand. You've got the seventh. You already know this measure, and then you just jump up an octave and play a C major chord to finish the whole piece with an uh, octave C added. Okay, and some people would play that really short. I have the pedaling there holding it. I think I'll, I'll go ahead and do that and hold the pedal until the end. I'll do that again counting. It goes one E and a two E and a one and two and. Okay? So that's the right hand, then the left hand. E and then the G chord. E and at the end you just were outline a C chord. So on those last two measures, going to the second ending, work until you've got that left hand memorized, and then put them together like this. One E and a two E and a one E and a two and. And that would be the end of the whole piece. For now, we'll just call it the end of the V phrase. Now we're going to go back and practice the whole V phrase with both hands. We're going to put a stop in the middle. We're going to go to the first inning the first time. So here it goes. One, E, and, a, two, E, and, a, one, E, and, a, two, E, and, a, one, E, and, a, two, E, and, a, one. First inning. Let's do that again going to the second inning. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one E and a second inning E and a two. And now let's 
put it together um, with a metronome at 72. And I'm going to do it once all the way through without the stop, going to the first inning, then I'll do it again going to the second inning, and then we'll double the speed so you can really see, hear what it sounds like. So, oh, that's too fast. Now the V phrase going to the second inning. the same way both to the first inning and the second inning but with a double that speed so you can kind of hear what it's going to sound like someday um, and of course like I can mention in other videos you are going to be able to go even faster on this piece someday but for now don't be too much in a hurry to get to the top speeds um, here it is at 72 first inning, now the second inning. Okay, and that was the B phrase. Once you have that learned and memorized, you're ready to play the whole section. All right, so we're going to go ahead and play the entire section five for you. I'm going to do it up at the metronome 72 for the eighth note. Um, again, this is a tempo that's a little bit too fast for somebody just starting out on the piece, but um, eventually you'll get it up to at least this tempo, and then and someday, of course, faster. But I just wanted to play it a tempo where you can kind of hear what it all sounds like and kind of follow along slow enough that you can follow along and see what's going on. So here we go. section five as well as the end of the entire piece so now at this point you know the whole piece um, but you, of course you know I have to understand that that's just the beginning once you get the whole thing learned and memorized then you can start working towards playing it with uh, all the expression and all the the different uh, tempos well probably not a ton of different tempos but faster tempos uh, but over time you will get it so good luck with that <laughs>